Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. You're the Modern Horizons Booster Box opening. This one is going to be for one of my patrons. This one's for Brandon. Now, disclaimer alert, we're not gonna ship these out until the street date. So before I get all the people reporting me to Wizards, we're just opening this early and we'll get the, these shipped out at the normal time. So anyway, one of the things I do over at my Patreon is we give people the opportunity to buy products at distributor price. A lot of people completely sold out of Modern Horizons, so Brandon has been gracious enough to let me open up a Modern Horizons box on camera, and so is Richard. So we're gonna do two of them. Two Modern Horizons booster boxes are gonna be cracked, and not gonna be profit or loss, we're just going to open the cards and, and talk about the cards a little bit, and that's that, so let's get cracking. All right, so first of all, I can't stand, I'm, I'm sure that some people like premium products to come in these square boxes or these rectangular boxes. I can't stand them. There's just a lot of waste and a lot of weight for no good reason, so they're a pain to ship. I mean, look, this thing's heavy by itself, this stupid uh, cutout thing you just throw away, and this stupid thing. All right, so anyway, pretty looking packs though. They're nice and bronze, they definitely pop out. Let's get to the first pack here. And we'll just go through this kind of quickly. We'll look at some of the cards and go through kind of quickly. Uh, you can actually go draft this over at Cardsphere in their draft simulator. They've done some pretty good programming uh, with uh, synergies and uh, trying to make the bots actually a lot more smarter. So first of all, we have the Phantom Ninja, the Imposter, the Spinehorn Minotaur, the Ninja of the New Moon, lots of ninjutsu cards in this set. So people can actually build a full ninjutsu commander now. The Venomous Changeling, lots of changelings. The Stream of Thought, Replicate. Target player puts the top four cards of the library in their graveyard. And you shuffle four. So this is going to have the ability to mill your opponents out in this format. The Excavating Anarid uh, has the Threshold ability. It gets plus one, plus one in Vigilance. So Threshold is a, a nice little addition. Lots of slivers. The Knight of Old Benalia with Suspend. So we're seeing a lot of the mechanics that uh, we haven't seen for a while. And the Sling Gang Lieutenant, which is kind of like a mini Siege Gang, more like the other, the fairy that used to pump out the the, uh, the goblins and you can sacrifice goblins to drain people. Pretty cool card. All right, Watcher for tomorrow. The the Ice Hide Golem and the Plane Bound Accomplice is our first rare. So this is the sneak and show for Planeswalkers. So Plane Bound Accomplice is you may put a Planeswalker card from your hand onto the battlefield, sacrifice the beginning of next end step. So a uh, really cool card to pair with Chandra, Torch of Defiance, and any other Planeswalker that creates a treasure or uh, can net up mana. This is a really, really cool card. And the foil is a Dismantling Blow. And there will be a Snow Covered Land in every pack and an art in every pack. And I don't really like these because it's just a waste of ink and a waste of a card. This could have just been a card in my opinion, but I don't know, whatever. Some people probably like them and collect them. Uh, not a fan. Alrighty, so we're gonna go through the quick, these quicker now. I'll just separate the rares and the uncommons and we'll, we'll just kind of slide through it. So more on information on the set, of course, just go check out a set like Mythic Spoiler and we'll just get right to these cards. Wow, that's, that pack opened up weird. Okay, so let's kind of fan through these. And we have the uh, Hollow-Headed Sliver, the Baleful Strix, or Baleful Blizzard Strix, not quite Baleful Strix. The uh, Farmstead Gleaner and Crashing Foothills is our second rare, with the Vyoshino Sprint Runner as the foil, and a Snow-Covered Island with a trusty Scout that was, I think I messed up the, the uh, order on those. Okay, alrighty, let's get right to the uncommons. We have the Miss Syndicate Naga, so another ninja card, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of the Syndicate. So you're just gonna start creating more and more tokens every time it deals combat damage. So good little tempo card, for sure, in the format. And this had a foil token? That's cool. So there's foil ones and non-foils. Yep, so you can get foil tokens and regular to, uh, tokens in this. In this, uh, Wow, that could give some uh, value to those foil tokens. Unless I missed some release notes somewhere that some are always foil. Someone in the comment section below will have to tell me. Okay, on to the next pack. Let's go through, and we have the uh, Ornophage, uh, Smiting Helix, Goblin or Flame. Force of Despair, so the Black Force. So you may exile black card from your hand rather than paying its mana cost and destroy all creatures that enter the battlefield this turn. Um, and no foil token this time. Are they double-sided? Maybe that's a double-sided token. 
Chloe, get out from underneath there. Sorry about the camera. Got the dog knocking the camera. All right, let's check to see that foil. It is not double-sided. So there's double-sided ones as well? I guess so. That's what I've heard. All right, so we'll be looking for double-sided tokens as well. Okay, so this is the pack we got to. Let's pull it through to the uncommons, the birthing bros, the alpine guide, generous gift, which is the beast within for white, so pretty good uh, color shift there, and the collected conjuring. This card has been uh, talked about with the worst card in the set, which XL top six card of your libraries, and you cast them two sorcery cards with converted mana cost three or less. People did the math on this, and this is gonna miss a ton. So uh, a lot of people are not liking that, uh, that rare. Been called the worst rare in the set. So, so far we haven't even opened up a mythic. Open up a foil token, nothing else is too, too cool. Too cool a word, too cool a phrase. All right, so we have the uh, Good Fortune Unicorn, the Ravenous Giant, the Rebuild, and Rebuild is pretty cool with the Eternal Artifacts to your owner's hands. So people are talking about, now we have another one that SRAM can abuse uh, to go off like a SRAM storm. And the uh, the uh, Pashalik Mon. So this is a card that is another goblin uh, that can be used for commander, but I don't know if it ever if it, it's better than the Krankos for this particular one. Uh, pretty cool card nonetheless. And uh, there we go. There's another foil. This is a foil shapeshifter. So we have done a, a regular shapeshifter and a foil one have been opened. So uh, we'll have to see what the the rate of foils are in this in these packs. Okay, let's get on to the next pack. We have the Baron Moor, Cycling Lands are back for Modern, Farmstead Gleaner, the Vengeful Devil, and the Lightning Skelemental. This is a card that definitely is one of the cards I want to brew around. It looks good in like a Living End base deck. People have been talking about the synergy of Bloodbraid Elf. A trap plays 6-1, uh, deals common damage to player that player just cards two cards, and then you sack it at the beginning of, beginning of uh, the end step. And no foil on this one. Okay, here we go. We have the Web Weaver Changeling, the Soul Herder, the Throws of Chaos, and the Aria of Flame. So when it's a battlefield, each opponent gains two life, and whenever you're casting this sorcery spell, you put a verse counter on it, it deals that much damage to the opponent. So people are talking about pairing this with cards that players can't gain life, like the new Tybalt. And no foil token in this. Jeez, these kind of open up awkward sometimes. Okay, so there's the Reckless Charge. A little bit of a thing, a person that was able to spoil a Reckless Charge was very, very salty that this was their spoiler card and talked about how, what a garbage card this was, how it wasn't played limited and will not see play in any sort of constructed format. Well, it already does see play in Popper. I think it's very good for Modern. Uh, it's better than all the ones that have been printed for the Haste type ability, has flashback on top of that. So I don't think this, is a bad card whatsoever. I think it's a very good spoiler card. Would have been honored to have that be a spoiler card for me. All right, let's go on to the Orcish Orflame, or Goblin Orflame, the first Slivers Chosen, and the Unsettled Mariner. Uh, whenever you or opponent you control becomes a target of spell or ability, opponent controls, counter that spell unless, uh, unless they pay one. And it has the Rhino, and it also has the Answered Prayers. Rhino is foil. All right, let's sift through this. To the Battle Screech, Awesome Card and Popper, Vengeful Devil, the Dismantling Bow, and the Sword of Truth and Justice. There is our first Mythic. This one is actually the one, one of the hottest cards out of the, the set. Uh, this one's actually retaining its value quite well. Uh, protection from white and blue, and whenever it deals combat damage to player, you get a plus one counter, and then it proliferates. So it's gonna do very well in Commander decks. The commander are gonna really want this card. Because uh, there's, of course, a lot of planeswalkers and things that can benefit after about getting proliferated and normal shapeshifter. So there's our first mythic. All right, so let's just uh, go ahead and spread these out, Rudy style here. So the uncommons, factor fiction's good. The endling, endling. Now they have a black one that gains menace, death touch, undying, and plus one, plus one, minus one, or minus one plus one. And still haven't hit these any sort of. Foil mythics or foil rares, pretty bad on the, the foils. All right, so let's, let's fan to the uncommons. We have the Bizarre Trade Mage. When it enters the battlefield, draw two cards and discard three cards. So begging to be broken in some sort of uh, dredge-based strategy. I, it, kind of awkward though. It does have a big body for three mana. And there is the foil to ransack the lab.
All right, next pack, we will sift through to the uncommons. The Ore Scale Guardian, Crypt Rats, great popper card, Scuddling Sliver, and the Goblin Engineer enters the battlefield. You may search your library for an artifact card, put it into your graveyard, then shove your library. And then you can sacrifice an artifact to return to our artifact with converted mana cost 3 or less to the battlefield. This is just like a good buried alive type effect for uh, artifacts. I think this is begging to be broken in the right shell. People have already identified some uh, pretty reasonable things of then reanimating an artifact back from the graveyard. Uh, could be playable in modern. We'll have to wait and see. And is that... I'm going to say this is like foily, but it's just shinier than most of the artworks. And a foil squirrel token. That one might have some value. There are a lot of squirrel decks out there. Okay, so backwards. So that must be the double face tokens we're talking about. So let's go wing shards, Urza's Rage, Goblin Matron, and the Fiery Islet, or Islet. I don't know how they actually pronounce that. You pay one life to add a green, or a green, a blue and a red to your mana pool, and you can sacrifice to draw a card. This is going to be very highly sought after. This is, I think, will be the card that is able to retain and accrue in value uh, more than any of the other card in the entire format. So this is a great, great pull. And a foil Astro Drift. This might be able to, to gain some value if it was not the pre-release promo, which is also foil. But nonetheless, there's the foil rare. And so there is a the double-sided token. It's a mirror and a goblin is the this double-sided one. So a lot of variance in these tokens of what they uh, are. Some double, some foil, some single-sided. Okay. The Talisman of the, of the Hierarchy. Uh, saddled Rimstag. So the Lava Belly Sliver. And Reap the Past. Return X cards at random from your graveyard to your hand and exile it. Alrighty, next pack. We have the Exclude. This will be interesting. This one actually sees play in Popper, or in, in uh, Modern, just because, does, because it does see play in Popper. Uh, the Nantuku Cultivator, the Abominable Tree Folk, and the Rarest Dead of Winter. All snow, non-snow creatures get negative X, negative X, and where X is the number of snow permanents you control. Kind of an interesting card in Modern if you play like a mono black deck, like mono black control, and this this is reasonable for a board wipe. I mean, Bontus is like the best one right now for three mana, and then your lands don't want to tap. But if you cast this on turn three, it's at least negative three, negative three to everything. Might not be good enough to get hollow ones, uh, dead or, or air anglers. So ugh, I don't know about the, the dead of winter, how playable it is or not. Good limited card for sure though. All right, let's go on to the next one is a Valiant Changeling, uh, Forgotten Cave, the uh, Vesper Lark, and Nurturing Peatlands. So there's two of the lands for Brandon. This one not, is the, the one that I think is the second best because of all the decks, I think Rock actually wants this. Uh, I think that they have a good uh, ability of getting their lands early but then don't want, don't want to run out of steam, and this is a, a great way to sacrifice them to draw cards to get more cards to finish off their opponent. So I think this one will be highly sought after. I think it's the one that's selling for the cheapest, too. I could be wrong. So, awesome. Awesome pull there. Okay, let's go on to the Grave Shifter, the Conifer Worm, the Frostwalk Bastion and Force of Virtue. So now there's the White Force. I'll be trying to brew around this card with Squadron Hawk. So I'll be looking forward to that brew. And then a Foil Bear. That one actually might have some value because of the new commander that's coming out for bears. So kind of cool card. Next up we have the Glacial Revelation, the Twisted Reflection. Wall of Blossom entering modern. This one's actually very interesting because Wall of Omens does see play. And Genesis, a legacy favorite. Would Genesis be able to reanimate cards if it's in your graveyard? This should spawn some pretty cool decks in modern. Um, at least some uh, like rock-based strategies I think might actually might want this card. All right, we got one column left of packs. All right, let's go down. And we have the... King of Pride, the uh, Talisman of Curiosity, the Dismantling Blow, and Yawgmoth Thran Physician. This, I think, will be a pretty popular commander. It's actually going in a lot of other commanders' decks because it does have the ability to discard a card to proliferate. So attracts of base decks are going to want this card. I think it will be highly sought after. Pretty good mythic. 
A lot of these cards will have kind of the same effect like Battle Bond and other sets do, where the commander cards will get uh, devalued very quickly and then they'll have the best chance of recovering. All right, let's go down to the Talisman of Creativity, uh, the Ca Talisman of Curiosity, Face of Divin Divinity, and Force of Vigor. So we got the, the green force now that destroys two target artifacts or enchantments, and a Foil Spore Frog. That's actually pretty. There we go. I, was this one available in a foil before? I can't remember it, what set it came from. There might not be a foil version of this before. This mine might hold some value. And... Go on to the next one. All right, let's see here. We have the Runishin Rider, the Dragscape Sliver, the Cunning Evasion, and the Giver of Ruins. So not as good as Mother of Ruins, but we'll take it. It will protect at least other creatures. At least this will eat a Lightning Bolt or a Path to Exile. And all your other creatures, especially your combo pieces, can be protected. But it can't protect itself like Mother of Ruins can. So it's kind of a fixed Mother of Ruins. Okay, on to this pack we have the Llanowar Tribe, adds three to your mana pool, the Factor of Fiction, the Vesper Lark, and a Nether Spirit, which is entering into the mix. So if Nether Spirit is the only creature card in your graveyard, you may return Nether Spirit to the battlefield. So kind of interesting at the beginning of your upkeep. I don't know though, a lot of dredge decks run a lot of creatures, but you have ways to get them out of the graveyard. Also Dre uh, Delve base decks might want the Nether Spirit. And a foil snow-covered island. That is pretty. Full art foil snow-covered island. So far, a pretty good box. Got a sword. The two mythics so far have been pretty decent. And we got two lands. Not bad. Okay, we have wing shards. Uh, Lone, Lonely Sandbar. The Eldamari's Call. Missed an uncommon there. And a mirror. Foil, foil mirror token. Okay, we have Orscale Guardian, Crypt Rats, the Ice Hide Golem, Hall of Helo's Generosity is the rare. Put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. So it's given a, a Vorash Stronghold, I believe is the one for creatures type effect, and a Winds of Abandon. So there's another foil rare with the overload of exile target creatures you don't control. And if it basically does the path to exile for all creatures. I think this will be a pretty decent uh, commander card. So foiling in this is, is, is definitely going to be have some value to it. And these, these foils actually should have quite a bit of value because unlike the other master sets, these are not one of it in every pack. So a lot more rare. So you got to expect it's like conspiracy or battle bond. So that could actually hold some decent value. Not going to do a profit or loss or, or add up the total of this. We're just going to get this out and, and for your viewing pleasure, not going to edit it. So on thin ice is this one's uh, rare. When Onth and Ice enters the battlefield, Exiltar creature, uh, so until it leaves the battlefield, you, you enchant a snow land. So there was the, the mountain one that came out of Theros that it works like. Okay. We have Talisman of Hierarchy, the Etchings of the Chosen, the Watcher for Tomorrow, and another Winds of Abandon. Not foiled this time, but we'll take it. Squirrel Nest, the Rebuild, Feaster of Fools, and there is the Bear Commander, the Ayula, Queen Among Bears. Whenever another bear enters the battlefield under your control, you choose one. Either put two plus one of those counters on a target bear, or a target bear you control fights another target creature you don't control. So, and then we have a Foil Construct. So, this is going to be a very popular commander. All the bears surrounding this commander have already gone up like crazy. So, the, the commander players are... Looking forward to brewing around this deck for that card. Okay, we have the Thundering Jin, the Ever Dream uh, Carrion Feeder. That's a good popper stable. And the Mirrodin Besieged, which whenever you cast an artifact, you create a 1 1 uh, mirror. And, or if you choose Phyrexia, you get. Uh, you get a draw card at the beginning of your end step, draw a card, then discard a card, and there are 15 or more artifacts in, in your graveyard. Target opponent loses the game. It's another dumb alternate win condition card. Not a fan of those type of stuff. And Commander 2 is kind of feels bad because you, you 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 kill one person. All right, so the Firebolts, Lesser Masticor, Abominable Tree Folk, and now we have the third land with the Silent Clearing. 
and a cunning evasion as the foil. So another great land here. That's, I think the, the lands again will hold their best value. Just look at the rising canopy as an example. So we've got the, the birthing bows, alpine guide, munitions expert, and spiteful sliver. Uh, whenever this creature deals, uh, slivers have whenever this creature is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target player or planeswalker. So they get the Boros Reckoner effect. A couple more packs left. We have the Tempered Sliver, the Trivium Mage, Scale Up. And people are talking about this card with Infect, turning Glistener Elf on turn number two into a base power and toughness of 6-4, and then giving one more pump spell, uh, and then winning the game, basically. And then the Cordial Vampire. Whenever Cordial Vampire or another creature dies, you put a plus one counter on each vampire you control. We have another Birthing Bows, Hollowhead Sliver, Soul Herder, and the Morph and the Boundless is another mythic, the Changeling. And as a battlefield, you choose a creature type, and then spells of the chosen type cost uh, five mana less to cast. This effect only reduces the amount of colored mana you pay. Other creatures you, con you control, the chosen type get plus one, plus one. This is going in a lot of decks for Commander. So Commander Horizons is definitely paying off in this box. Okay, we have the Valiant Changeling, the Forgotten Cave, the Talisman of, Re of Resilience. I believe that's all the talismans now. And the Cloud Shredder Sliver. Uh, slivers have Flying and Haste on one sliver. And we got a Foil Elephant. All right, let's see what we got here. We have the... Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce this one. The Pillage, the Splicer Skill, and an Astral Drift with a boring zombie token. And we got the last pack here for Brandon. See if we can get a Foil Mythic to pay off this box. We have the Sling Gang Lieutenant, Goblin Matron, Generous Gift, Merit Lages Slumber as the remaining rare. Whenever Slumber or another snow permanent enters the battlefield, you scry one. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more snow permanents, it uh, becomes a 2020 black avatar creature with flying and indestructible. And the foil is not a foil mythic, but an orcish hellraiser with echo. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video, Brandon. We'll get these shipped off at a reasonable time. And pretty good box. We had three of the Horizon Canopy type lands and the, the best two, in my opinion. Had some good mythics, had a decent foil rare. So all in all, I think this is a pretty decent box. Anyway, we'll have the other box here. We still got another box to go. We'll do it in another video. This will, this will be for Richard. So be looking forward to that one uh, uploading here in uh, a few hours from now. Anyway, this has been Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder. If you're interested in supporting this sort of content, be sure to check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash rogue deck builder. And you can get in on these cheap booster box prices. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.